friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Shailene and in today's video I am finally going to be talking about the books that I'm most anticipating to read in 2020. This video is super late. If you've seen my January and February wrap up you would know that I have been experiencing a lot of health issues lately and it's kept me from filming videos so I'm so sorry that this video is so late but nevertheless it's finally here. So we're just going to jump right on into the video. For January, I have a few releases. On January 7th, uh, One of Us is Next by Karen M. McManus. I have yet to pick this book up. I haven't found it in stores. All I know, this is a sequel to One of Us is Lying. It is following um, some of the siblings of the characters of the previous book at Bayview High. And there's this app um, that's going around the school with a dangerous truth or dare game. I didn't really love One of Us is Lying that much, but I still think that they're very fun books to read. So the next book is Creatures by Chrissy Van Meter. Um, on the eve of Evie's wedding, a whale is trapped in the harbor. The room might be lost at sea. Her mother shows up out of the blue and Evie is struggling with the complexities of love, abandonment, guilt, forgiveness, betrayal, and grief. This book really caught my eye. Um, it's just, it looks like an interesting contemporary read. So the next book is Jane Anonymous by Lori Ferreira Stolars. I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name, but this is about a girl who was held captive for months with another kid called Mason. She escapes, but she isn't able to take Mason with her in the process. She's now back home and her family, they try to go on as normal, nothing happened, but no one in her family, not even her therapist, um, seems to kind of get her and understand what she really went through, so she starts writing in a journal. Eventually, when she meets with the detectives handling her case, she learns that there were no other kids held captive with her. And soon, she begins to wonder if Mason was real or not at all. I thought this was a very interesting book. You guys know I'm always up for a thriller or a murder mystery. And I felt this was a very interesting one to read. So I really hope I can get my hands on that soon. Hopefully the library opens. <laughs> so on January 22nd, The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson actually came out. I bought the book. I read it. I did an entire Truly Devious reading vlog with the book. So that video should be up by the time you're seeing this. If not, I'll leave it linked in the description below. So for February, on February 4th, we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Basically, a Hurdy and popular high school senior was murdered by her boyfriend who then killed himself. Five years later, Pip, she thinks that there is more to the story and so she begins to suspect that this wasn't a murder-suicide after all. And so she starts to investigate and she uncovers a lot of dark secrets about her town. 18 Tiny Death, the untold story of Francis Glessner Lee and the invention of modern forensics by Bruce Goldfarb. I actually received an arc of this from NatGalley, um, I read it, I DNF'd it. Basically this is about um, Frances Lee Gessner and her life story and how she helped to really build a cohesive foundation for modern forensics to become what is today modern forensics. If you want to hear more about that book and why I didn't exactly like it or it didn't click with me, you can go ahead and um, check out my Nonfiction Fridays video. I don't know if it'll, it's probably not going to be up by the time you see this video, but keep an eye out for it and it'll be up. On February 6th, Perfect Kill um, book number six, the D.I. Callahan series by Helen Fields. In this book, Bart Campbell is drugged, kidnapped, and shipped to France. DCI Ava Turner and DCI Luke Callahan um, are working on separate cases that soon collide and they discover that it's becoming apparent that men and women are being shipped to and from France and are being trafficked. On February 11th, we have American Sherlock, Murder, Forensics, and the Birth of American CSI by Kate Wickler Dawson. So in Berkeley, California in 1933, 
in a lab filled with curiosities, beakers, microscopes, and Bunsen burners with hundreds of books, an investigator who would go on to crack at least 2,000 cases in his 40 year career, also known as the American Sherlock, Edward Oscar Heinrich, was one of America's greatest and first forensic scientists with an uncanny knack for solving mysteries and establishing clues and evidence and um, yeah, doing it with scale that almost seems supernatural. I think this was a really interesting book to read about because this is a book um, that does chronicle, you know, the life of an investigator in the early parts of when modern forensics was taking off. Next we have The Illness Lesson by Claire Beams. Um, at a newfound boarding school in the 19th century, promising a groundbreaking education for young women, a mysterious illness begins to take hold in the young women. One by one they are struck with this illness and they are sick. Um, fearing ruin for the school, the headmaster instead calls in a noted doctor, a man whose sinister um, ministrations based on shocking and horrifying treatments. So basically, it's a story of sexist men disbelieving women, basically labeling them as being hysterical. February 18th, we have The Genius of Women from Overlook to Changing the World by Janice Kaplan. In this nonfiction book, the author sets out to determine why uh, so many extraordinary women and the work of these women have just been brushed aside in history. Um, and she makes some surprising discoveries about women geniuses throughout history. I think this is a very interesting book to read since we all can name off loads and loads and loads of men who have plenty of accomplishments but not a lot of us can name off women with plenty of accomplishments and that needs to be changed. On February 25th we have Being Human, an Unrepented Memoir of a Disability Rights Activist by Judith Human and Christa Joyner. Um, so this is the life story of one of the most influential disability rights advocates in U.S. history and tells her personal story of fighting for the right to receive the right to an education, to have a job, and just be human. On March 3rd, we have Be Not Far From Me by Mindy McGuinness. So Ashley, she goes hiking in the mountains with her friends and they go in for a night of partying, but she sees her boyfriend and another girl hook up. And so she takes off running into the woods and she takes a nasty fall into a ravine, alone, lost, and with a nasty infection creeping up her leg. She has to find her way home. I'm super excited to get my hands on this book because it sounds like it's going to be such a good, like, you know, fighting for survival kind of story. The next book is The June Boys by Court Stevens. So the Gemini Thief is a serial kidnapper who takes boys and holds them hostage um, from June 1st to the 30th of the following year when they are then released. The thief is a pro having evaded authorities for at least two decades. Um, Thea has reason to believe that her cousin has been taken, but then everything changes when one of the boys turns up dead. Together with her best friend and her boyfriend, she is determined to find out who the Gemini thief really is. On March 10th, we have The Deep by Alma Katsu. I actually won this arc in a giveaway, which I'm very pleased about. So basically, this is a alternate um, retelling of the sinking of the Titanic. The passengers of the Titanic experience some sort of haunting and soon sudden disappearances and deaths begin occurring and soon tragedy strikes and the Titanic sinks to the bottom of the ocean. Four years later, Annie, having survived that night, is reunited with one of the other passengers that was on the ship on that fateful night. Um, and they reunite on the Britannic, uh, the Titanic's sister ship. And so feeling from that fateful night are reawakened and as are the mysterious tragedies that occurs in the hours before the sinking of the Titanic. This is <laughs> a Titanic of a book at 500 pages. Um, so yeah, this will be very interesting to read. The next book is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Boy oh boy has there been a lot of controversy surrounding this book, but nonetheless I am very much interested in reading this book. Basically we have a 15 year old girl who becomes involved with her 42 year old English teacher 
Now, in present day, amid the Me Too era, a former student has come up with allegations against her former English teacher and reaches out to her. She now has complicated feelings about the whole affair and faces an impossible choice. Stay silent and firm in her belief that she willingly engaged in the affair or redefine herself and her feelings about the affair. I'm actually on the waiting list on Libby to get that book, so hopefully within the next few months I will be able to read it. I'm hoping, like, fingers crossed. It sounds like a good read. On March 17th, we have Darling Rose Gold by Stephanie Warble. For the first 18 years of her life, Rose Gold Watts believed that she was seriously ill. She was allergic to everything, used a wheelchair, and practically lived at the hospital, but doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. Turns out, her mother was just a really good liar, and was sent to jail for five years for Munchausen by proxy syndrome. Basically, she made her own daughter sick. On the day she is released, she claims she wants to form a better relationship with Rose Gold, and so Rose Gold takes her in, and they begin to live together. Unfortunately for Patty, Rose Gold is no longer her weak little darling. So yeah, I actually received an arc of this book and I read it in March, so it will be in my March wrap-up. I'll tell you now, it was quite an interesting read. So in April, I only have one book for April, sadly. On April 28th, Ocean Anatomy, The Curious Parts and Pieces of the World Under the Sea by Julia Rothman comes out. This is actually a children's non-fiction graphic novel kind of book. Uh, basically, essentially an illustrated guide to the ocean, everything from how it works to the creatures in it. I also received an arc of this um, from Story Publishing and Neck Alley. I read it, I loved it. I will also have a review of that in my March wrap up. So for May, May 5th, we have Last Girls by Demetria Brodsky. Um, no one knows how the world will end. On the secret compound in the Washington wilderness, Honey, Juniper, and her sisters are training to hunt, homestead, and to protect their own. Prepare for every situation. But when danger strikes uh, from within, putting her sisters at risk, training becomes a real life and only one thing is certain, nowhere is safe. So I have actually also received an arc of this, so I will definitely be reading this in April and I'll have a review up in my April wrap up. Then on May 14th, we have House of Lies, uh, Cat Carlisle number three by Terry Lynn Thomas. This is book number three in the Cat Carlisle series. Um, we follow Cat as she's operating a shelter for battered women trying to escape from their abusive husbands during World War II, uh, while Thomas is also working at Contabulary and offering his home as a refuge for relics from across Europe to escape the hands of Nazis and, of course, murder occurs. I actually received an arc of this and I read it in February, so my review of this book will be in my February wrap-up. On May 19th, we have The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is actually the prequel to The Hunger Games. So we follow President Snow as a young man as he mentors a young female tribute in the arena as he starts to have feelings towards the whole thing and does whatever it takes to be on the winning team. So a lot of controversies surrounding this one as everybody thought this was going to be a different book than it's supposed to be, but um, in May I do plan to reread the Hunger Games trilogy. Hopefully my library library's open by then so I can actually request this book. So in June, on June 2nd we have I Killed Zoe Spanos by Kit Frick. So when Anna arrives in Heron Mills for a summer babysitting job, she discovers she bears a very strong resemblance to Zoe Spanos, a local girl who has been missing since New Year's Eve. Anna delves deeper into the mystery of Zoe's life and begins to believe the two are connected in some way and that she knows what happened to her. Two months later, Zoe's body is found and Anna is charged with manslaughter, but her confession is littered with holes. Martina Green, um, is the teen host of the Missing Zoe podcast and she isn't satisfied. Did Anna kill Zoe? If not, can Martina prove it? I actually have received an arc of this book so I will be reading and reviewing this book when June arrives. On June 23rd we have The Girl from Widow Hills by Megan Miranda. Um, so Arden Maynard was just a child when she was swept away in a rainstorm while sleepwalking and went missing for days. 
A search party looked for her, and after a while, she was found alive. The girl from Widow Hills was a living miracle. Arden's mother wrote a book about it. Fame followed, as did fans, creeps, and stalkers. It all became too much for Arden, and as she grew older, she changed her name and disappeared from public life. Arden has managed to stay off the radar and the media, but now it's the 20th anniversary of her rescue is approaching. Will the media renew an interest in her? And will the truth come out? Soon Arden feels like she's being watched all the time and begins sleepwalking again. And late one night, she awakens to a corpse of a man at her feet, whom she knows from her previous life. I also have an arc of this and will be reading it in June. On June 30th, we have The Mirror Man by Jane Gilmartin. So Jeremiah gets an offer from a pharmaceutical company to be a part of an illegal cloning experiment and he sees it as a chance to get a break from his life. No one will notice he's been replaced, even his distant wife or the son that ignores him. Especially so since a revolutionary drug called Meld can transfer his consciousness and memories to his copy. From a luxurious apartment, he watches his clone go about his normal day-to-day -day life. But things soon become alarming as he watches his life spiral out of control. But Vigen needs the experiment to succeed. They won't call it off and are prepared to remove anyone who interferes. With his family in danger, Jeremiah prepares to face himself head on. This sounds so interesting and it reminds me so much of what something Blake Crouch would write and I'm always down for those sorts of books. So I'm very excited for this one. So in July, on July 21st, we have The Perfect Father, the true story of Chris Watts, his all-American family and a shocking murder by John Glatt. So Chris Watts filed a missing persons report for the disappearance of his wife and two young daughters. Soon he's on TV pleading for his wife and kids to come home. Then 24 hours later, he confesses to the murder of his wife and kids and the disposal of their bodies. This is the story of everything that was going on behind the scenes. I have also received an arc of this and I will read and review this in July. I do not have a book for August, but I do for September. And September 1st, Fable by Adrienne Young comes out. Um, it's super hard to describe this book. Basically, we're in this world made dangerous by the sea and those who profit from it where a young girl must find her place and her family while trying to survive in a world built for men. That's basically the shortest descriptor I can give you. September 15th, Brazil That Never Was by A.J. Lees. This is a non-fiction book about a British neurologist who embarks on a journey to the Amazon jungle to follow in the footsteps of famed explorer Percy Fawcett, who went missing in the Amazon in 1925, trying to find the lost city of Z. On September 22nd, we have Eli's Promise by Ronald H. Balson. I'm a huge fan of Ronald H. Balson. I've read at least three of his books so far. Love his writing. So basically, this is about a fixer in a Polish town during World War II, his betrayal of a Jewish family and a husband's quest for justice 25 years later. I also have an arc of this book, so I will be reading and reviewing this book in September. Super excited for it. So in October, October 1st, we have The Devil and the Dark Water by Stuart Turton. Stuart Turton wrote um, The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I absolutely love this book, so I'm excited to see what this book's going to be like. Um, the descriptor for it is a murder on high seas, a detective duo, and a demon who may or may not exist. I'm not the biggest fan of books with demons and demonism in it, but I'm willing to give this one a shot. So October 6th is the, well, long-awaited sequel for me of The Crown of Coral and Pearl. So we have The Kingdom of Sea and Stone by Mara Rutherford. So ever since Nora was forced to go to a nearby kingdom in her sister's place, she has wanted nothing more to return to the place and the people that she loves. But when her wish comes true, she soon finds herself cast out from both worlds and with a war on the horizon. And soon an old enemy resurfaces, more powerful than ever. Nora will have to keep the kingdom from falling apart with the help of Prince Talon and Nora's twin sister Zadie. 
there are forces within the world more mysterious than any of them ever guessed and they'll need to stay alive long enough to conquer them. I do not have any books for November or December yet. Um, likely when uh, probably July rolls around I'll have another list of books that I'm anticipating for the second half of the year. So yeah, that is all for now. Those are all the books that I am anticipating to come out, that I'm excited to see come out, that I will hopefully pick up sometime. I don't know when. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I will leave links to my Instagram, my Goodreads, and my Twitter in the description below. And I hope to see you guys next time. Bye!